For some reason, I have this weird fascination with extreme sports games. It might have to do with the fact that I was kind of born as soon as they were kind of surging in popularity. Maybe it's just because I like to see people fly through flaming hoops on motorbikes. I don't know. But if you do know me, you know I'm a pretty big Jet Set Radio fan because honestly, half the time it's all I talk about. Before I was into Jet Set Radio though, I really loved Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. Since it's almost 20 years old and the remastered combo game of Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 drops tomorrow, let's revisit Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 and see if it still feels fun. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 was released in a range of time. It might sound confusing, but depending on what system you had, you'd be playing as Rodney Mullen for the first time ever on September 7th, 2000, August 21st, 2001, or somewhere in between. Activision would bring back their star developer Neversoft to expand on their ideas from the first game. We'll be using the PlayStation version for both the re-experience and for capturing footage, because it's what I grew up with, and will have the best idea of whether or not I was a garbage child based on my video game taste. That being said, it might be good to compare the different releases of Pro Skater 2. Since it's one of the best selling PS1 games of all time, someone at Activision thought, hey, you know what? We can make way more money if we port this everywhere. So there's a few different versions of Pro Skater 2, and to help you figure out which is best, here's a segment I like to call, what version of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 should you play? play, 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 play. All right, let's start off with the PS1 release. It came first, and it's essentially the beefier upgrade to the original Tony Hawk Pro Skater. You've got new levels, new music that I'd argue is way more iconic, because seriously, who wants to listen to Superman by Goldfinger on loop forever? And new features like the level editor. While it's the version everyone remembers, time has not been so nice to these old textures, and moving through menus or boot screens can take a little longer than you're expecting. Control-wise, it felt fine. I was using a PS3 to capture footage, so I was using the DualShock 3, I gotta be honest that D-pad really hurts the thumb. In terms of content and visuals, the versions held up as probably the best would be the Dreamcast version and the ports for Windows and Mac. If you're handy with getting older games working on newer computers, I'd go with the PC version as there's extra stuff to do, but the Dreamcast version is the best looking console port and has all the content from the PS1 version. The other ports I'd only really go for if you really like Pro Skater 2. The N64 version from Edge of Reality loads faster, and it does have a level for Matt Hoffman's Pro BMX as an extra, but it's obviously lower resolution than the PlayStation 1, and the soundtrack is only limited to a few loops, which is a bummer. The GBA version is a completely different game, it's more of a 2D isometric game if that's your style. The iOS version, like the PC port, does include three extra levels from the first game, but it is lower resolution than the PlayStation 1 version, and the hassle to find a way to play it is just not worth it. Now there's one more version of Pro Skater 2 that I'd probably check out, and that is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2X. It's less of an actual port and more of an enhanced remake. You've got all the music, all the levels from Pro Skater 2 and Pro Skater 1. You have five new levels, three career modes, a female create a skater. You've got custom song support if you have music on your Xbox. You can play up to eight players in multiplayer. And the best part is a balance meter for grind and lip tricks. Finally! Now, like I said, it's more of a reconstruction of the original levels, so it's not gonna feel the same, but it's the best looking version of Pro Skater 2, until tomorrow at least. So if you wanna try Pro Skater 2, go with PS1, Dreamcast, Xbox, or PC if you can find a copy. All right, let's actually talk about the game. It's pretty dang simple. You wanna be the best pro skater, just like Tony Hawk. There's no real story in THPS2, which is something I'm not sure I really miss. You can't decide between me and a kid in a body cast? You want to kill me? Bring it on, dude! Now your goal is to move through the new pro skater levels, completing goals, racking up high scores, finding secret areas, and collecting that sweet, sweet cash. Gotta pay the bills somehow. In between a few levels, you'll have competitions where you compete against computer skaters and get the most points while trying not to bail. Unlocking all the levels and placing first in all competitions will clear career mode. Is it hard to beat? It has its moments. I'm no expert, or in this case, a pro skater, but I managed to make it through most of the levels and make enough money to finish without hating my life. I did play as a custom skater, so the levels were fine, but honestly, the competition sucked. If you're not used to how the game controls, you'll learn real quick or just give up trying. 
or just buy more stats and tricks in the shop. Pro Skater 2 is just a bit more stiff than I remember. Like I said before, you have to use the D-pad to control everything movement-wise, so you really only have eight different directions to move in, which is kind of odd considering the DualShock controller was a thing. So it turns out I'm just dumb, and you can use both the D-pad and the joysticks. On the bright side, I've got a pretty good callus going for the new remaster. The tricks aren't the hardest to pull off as long as you're at least aware of how much momentum and air you're going to work with. You're not doing a 900 spin as Tony Hawk off a tiny half pipe. It's just not happening. Luckily, though, there are other tricks to do. You have grab tricks, flip tricks, and for rails, grind tricks. There's lip tricks too, but that's really just a grind trick in place. Pro Skater 2 also adds manuals as a new feature to help you build up your score by keeping you rolling on the board. Staying on the board with a manual is good, but you can't do a lot if you don't have speed. There's also different stances you can toggle on your board for different variations of tricks, which is helpful for racking up points and combos. Combos are kind of dependent on momentum too. I was prone to using half pipes and doing a flip trick, grab trick combo to build up easy points. As you land more and more tricks, you'll build up your special meter, which gives you more momentum and the opportunity to hit some special tricks, including Tony Hawk's 900 spin. The way you move around in this game is not really realistic, but I think that's what helps it be accessible. There's games like Thrasher's Skate and Destroy and EA's Skate that have a lot more realism built in. Pro Skater is more of an arcade niche with extreme sports games. The reason why Pro Skater has been so popular is that it gives you all these building blocks to learn how to put all these tricks together without throwing you right in the deep end. You can mess around with the button combinations and find stuff that works together, and before you know it, you could be a speedrunner beating the game in less than 13 minutes. I don't know how they do it. Practice makes perfect, especially in skateboarding, and I do think that Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 really embodies that idea. What helps you with all that practice is a really good soundtrack and oh baby, it's good. Activision and Neversoft really took advantage of the CD-ROM and got us some licensed music that was fun and really good to skateboard to. Now, obviously with copyrights, I really can't play all of it, but I can kind of tell you some of like the big hitters. Rage Against the Machines, Gorilla Radio, which is probably the best song off of Battle of Los Angeles. There's Blood Brothers by Papa Roach, which is maybe like the second or third best track off of Infest, although it's kind of hard to beat Last Resort. You have the Public Enemy, Bring the Noise remix with Anthrax. You've got bands like Styles of Beyond, Consumed, Fu Manchu, Bad Religion, and many, many more. Plus. Power Man 5000, the rulers of licensed music. Like, I could probably just go on a shelf, pick a random 2000s game with licensed music, and nine times out of 10, there's gonna be a song by Power Man 5000. The soundtrack is a nice blend of hard rock, metal, hip hop, rap, and new metal. It's curated for the time period, and I love it. Hands down, one of the best licensed video game soundtracks and probably why I can never stop listening to Rage Against the Machine. I know someone's gonna say that you can turn down the music, so I'll just respond with this. We can't be friends. To summarize so far, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 improves on the original. It adds new tricks to make combos easier to pull off. It has a kick-ass soundtrack. It has new features like manuals to help you build up combos. And it has stances to make sure you know that you're hitting some of the stuff correctly. And it's a very easy game to learn. And that's great, but what makes this game timeless? All of these factors are important, but the driving force in my mind is replayability. The desire for you to actually come back to a game is really determined by how much there is to do and how much you enjoy it. I can confidently say that unless I decide to start speedrunning, I'm probably never going to play career mode often or ever again. What I will come back for are the extra features like the Matt Hoffman Pro BMX demo. Okay, that's a lie, but you know, it's, it's kind of like hot garbage. I've always liked going back to play multiplayer mode in the Pro Skater games. It's just fun to play against your friends and have a good time. And THPS2 really delivers on that promise. The staple modes, graffiti, trick attack, and horse are back from the first Pro Skater. Trick attack is essentially a two player session to see who can get the highest score under the time limit. Horse is sort of like basketball horse. Essentially, it's a one combo competition. Now the person who puts together the worst combo will get a letter, and whoever spells out the word first loses. My personal favorite is graffiti, where you tag different surfaces in a level, 
by doing tricks, and they change to your player color. You can also steal your opponent's spot if you score a better combo than they do, which can really bring the match right down to the wire, and it's pretty exciting. Pro Skater 2 also adds another new game mode called Tag. It's like the playground game, but a little bit different. If you're it, you have to nail a bunch of tricks and combos, and if you manage to land them all, your opponent's stats will go down until they can barely move so that you can tag them yourself. They're pretty fun to play, and I don't think you're going to be too disappointed. The level editor isn't something I used a lot as a kid, but it does make its debut here. You've got all sorts of structures, objects, half pipes, and rails to build from, although the area templates are a bit bare. Even still, it's still pretty fun to make some new levels to try out. Overall, multiplayer is just good, simple fun, and I like going back to play these games with my friends. One of the big reasons I like coming back to the Pro Skater games is that no matter what, you can always find something weird to do or something weird to input, like a cheat code, and get everything you want. I will say I've seen the completionist Pro Skater 2 video where he goes through career mode with every single skater, plus the secret skaters, and spends all this time getting everything unlocked. I gotta be honest, I don't have time for that. I don't, and you probably don't either. So here's what you do if you want to unlock everything. Start up career mode, pick any character, jump into any level you want, then pause your game, put in this code, and the text should shake. And the run, and you'll get the career complete message, with either a character or a modifier unlocked. The modifiers are pretty fun. I wouldn't put them all on at once, especially sim mode, which is designed to feel like real skateboarding, and it's pretty damn stiff. If you want to do some glitches, I'd also suggest trying out the code for jetpack mode, which basically just lets you fly around and do whatever you want. It's pretty fun. The other completion bonus is secret characters. There's Officer Dick, a reject skater turned security guard you unlock after 100% completing career mode with any skater. There's Private Carrera, modeled after an adult film star, and is unlocked once you clear all the gaps in the game. Now that takes a long time, so you know what? Here's another code if you want to unlock that too. But the best secret character is the greatest character in the franchise history, and it's probably 75% of the reason why I came back to Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2. But let me rewind for a second here. In September 2018, to celebrate a new game release, I made a video on a game made by the tag team of, you guessed it, Activision and Neversoft. It ran on the same engine as Pro Skater 2, and it released a month before. That game just so happens to be Spider-Man 2000. If you clear career mode as a custom skater like I did, guess who you get to play as? That's right, baby. It's the wall crawler. It's the web slinger. It is Spider-Man. All right, uh, listen, I know I cheated before, but I really did do this one 100%. I promise. I promise. I wouldn't lie. My favorite superhero in my favorite skateboarding game. Can't beat it. Nothing beats it. This is why Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 is timeless. It made the possibilities endless. If you decide to play this game legit, you know, there's a lot to do. There's a lot of content here for you to enjoy. If you decided to be a cheater cheater pumpkin eater like me, you'll at least have a lot of fun in multiplayer mode with your friends playing as characters like Spider-Man and... Tony Hawk. It's an easy game to learn and it's hard to master, but the journey itself is a blast. It's an element that I think is missing from a lot of new games. A simple, fun experience that has a lot to find and unlock without paying extra money. Much like its real life inspiration, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 is creativity unleashed. Anyway, I'm gonna go get hype for the remaster. Thanks so much for watching. I'd recommend checking out my Spider-Man 2000 video if you wanna learn more about how good Neversoft was as a game developer in the late 90s and early 2000s. But with all that said, I'm Paul Spruf, and I'll see you later.